the available non-pharmacological interventions that target cortical and subcortical pain-related activity include neurofeedback, hypnosis, mindfulness meditation training, and current stimulation. Many kinds of pain have been treated with neurofeedback training and often respond significantly. Some of the research is case study and some small group designs. In most instances, pain can be reduced to some degree using neurofeedback, but there are cases that are unresponsive. The kinds of pain reported on so far that are responsive include chronic back pain, peripheral nerve injury, pain from cancer, fibromyalgia, trigeminal neuralgia, migraine headaches, complex regional pain syndrome, and gastrointestinal pain. Studies consistently continue to report changes in brainwave activity due to pain. The frequencies associated with pain vary. Both acute and chronic pain studies have shown reproducible changes of increased fast waves, that is beta 13 to 35 hertz. In some cases, also changes in slow wave activity, 8 to 10 hertz. There's also as well theta changes, which may in fact be related to slow alpha or diminished blood perfusion. In general, efforts to use neurofeedback for pain treatment commonly seek to reduce fast wave activity such as beta and increase normal slower wave activity such as alpha. Sites that have been effectively used for training include T3 and T4, CZ, C4, and a variety of mixed sites that involve all of these. To be more specific, frequencies reinforced in the neurofeedback protocols have also varied and involve suppression of beta, reinforcement of alpha 9 to 11 hertz, reinforcement of SMR 12 to 15 hertz, or some combination of the above. Here is an example of diffuse physiological pain with a major focus on the back and leg. This client had previously had a mild stroke and consequently elevated diffuse delta and slowed alpha due to ongoing inflammatory cascades. The temporal theta, however, varied with daily changes in pain. Note the right temporal beta as well. Training down the right hemisphere theta and increasing low beta or SMR produced significant relief. Decreasing delta frequencies also reduced the client's tinnitus. This slide shows the same client's Loretta map with both elevated beta and theta in the right hemisphere. Temporal lobe beta hypercoherence is also typical with pain and likely reflects insula dysregulation. Here is a trend screen showing the client on a high pain level day. Note the elevated right hemisphere theta indicated by the blue line at the top of the screen. You can see that we're training that theta down effectively over the course of the session. On low pain level days, the same client and the same theta is dramatically diminished and equal to the theta in the left hemisphere. Here is a Loretta map of another fibromyalgia case. Note the same locations activated as in the other maps and includes the anterior cingulate, posterior cingulate, and parietal lobes. 